Alrighty, welcome everybody. I know this is a different night. I'm usually on Wednesdays. Um, hopefully my modem is going to handle it tonight. Uh, I'm not sure. They keep telling me they get it fixed and then I continue to have problems. So we'll see. For those of you that are new watching me, my name is Julie Brown. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome. I hope you are ready to do some card making tonight. I'm working with a really, really fun set tonight um, and I can't wait to show you all the fun things that this bundle can do. Um, but while I'm waiting for everybody to get on, I'm going to cover a little bit of housekeeping. First off, if you're new and you've never been on a Facebook Live before, but you'd like to ask a question, you can just type it in the comments and I can usually see it come through and I will answer that. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can still type in comments. It will send me a text and let me know that I have a new comment and I can answer any questions that you might have. Um, also, if you are watching this on Facebook Live, I will be putting a link um, to uh, the some of the products that I'm going to be showing you tonight, and I'll talk to you why that's important a little bit later. But let's get rid. Of, let's take care of some housekeeping really quick while we're waiting for everybody to get on. So, um, for anyone who places an order with me this month, that is the hostess code. And that's if you're going to place an order that is under $150, please use that code. You can order through me at juliebrown.stampin, without the G, stampinup.net. And then you can see there's my email, there's my Pinterest, and Facebook, and Instagram pages. Um, now my YouTube channel is a little bit different. You have to type in my name, Julie Brown, and then the, the dot or the period, and then Julie's Creative Stamping. Also, make sure you check out my blog. It is a website in progress, um, but there's a lot of really good articles on there to help you with uh, if you're if you're having issues with the way that you stamp, if things aren't coming out right. Um, it talks to you about all the different types of stamps. I have a lot of really good articles. Plus, I also post any of um, or, or a lot of my cards that I create are also posted there. All right. So I think I've wasted enough time with all of that. So let's get busy. So let's look at the set that we'll be working with tonight, maybe. So um, this is Tricks or Treats. You can find it in the new mini catalog. If you don't have a catalog and you don't have a demonstrator and you would like to see one of these mini catalogs, um, we used to call them uh, like our spring catalog, our holiday catalog. Now they just call it our... Um, September through December mini catalog, but it does have a lot of holiday stamp sets. So you're going to see a lot of autumn, fall, Halloween, Christmas in this uh, catalog. So if you'd like one, reach out to me at that email that you saw on there and I can get a catalog out to you. But it's on page 50 and it is a bundle. So again, if you are new to stamping up, hey Brenda, um, our bundles mean it's either a stamp set and a punch a stamp set and an embossing folder, or in this case, a stamp set and dies. So let's look at those. So this is the stamp set. It is a photopolymer, which means it is clear. Now I can't show you the stamps because I have them already on the blocks. So they're clear stamps. Um, now this is a really cool die set because it has all of these different, it's got two, two sections and so it cuts out a lot of the stuff that you're going to be stamping, but then it has a lot of these really fun standalone dies, which I'm going to show you in just a hot second. Okay, so, he so here's the deal. I'm going to be demonstrating three cards for you tonight. Now, if you decide to purchase it from me, not only are you going to get the PDFs for the three that I do tonight, but I will be designing nine more cards with this set and you will be able to get uh, free PDFs for all of those. So let's get started with our first card. Um, I'm gonna do my normal. This is gonna be my simple stamping card. And those are for people who may not have the um, die set or don't have you don't have a die cut machine to cut out the dies. <clears throat> this is gonna be a really fun uh, way to use this set with just the stamps. All right, so we're going to start out and we're going to kind of design a background. So I'm going to bring in all the colors. I'm going to be using pumpkin pie and let me go ahead and get these open. And um, this is parakeet party. I almost said granny apple green because I'm so used to using granny apple green. 
Um, and then we're going to be using Orchid Oasis and Basic Gray. Okay, so these are all set up here. Alrighty, so we're gonna do Frankenstein's head. Now these are two-step stamps, which means to get the desired um, image, you have to stamp, um, this is like the one of the images, and then there's an image that we stamp on top of this. So I'm gonna put him there. I'm gonna kind of bring him in at an angle over here. And then I'm gonna bring him in at an angle down here. All right. So there's that. Sorry, someone's asking me if I'm on page if I am on Facebook. So let me just answer her really quick. All right, so we're gonna do that one. And now let me clean this off with our chamois. Oh, hey, Shanine. Shanine's here tonight. Brenda's here tonight. Welcome, welcome, ladies. Okay, so now we're gonna come in with the Orchid Oasis. And this is another head. And this one is actually Count Dracula. All right, so we're going to bring him in here. And then we're going to bring him in up here as well. All righty. So now we're going to do the part where we add the hair and the faces. And I know a lot of people struggle with the two-step stamping. But I just want to let you know that one of the things that... Hey, Janet! One of the things that you should do is practice on a scrap piece of paper before you do it on your card just to make sure you kind of get everything lined up. And and I do that all the time, but guys, I mess them up too, so um, don't feel bad if it doesn't turn out perfectly for you uh, the first time that you do this. I needed to re-ink this. Okay, so this is Frankenstein's head, and let me see, I'm gonna have to try to stand up to get, whoa, to get this lined up. I almost dropped that right in the middle of that. Oh my gosh, look how cute he is. Once we stamp him, isn't that adorable? And then I'm just going to come in here. And obviously, the whole thing's not going to stamp on there. And then I'm going to come up here and do the same thing, trying to get lined up here. All right, so there he is up there. So let's clean that off. Isn't he super cute? I'm kind of liking Frankenstein a little bit. I can't, can't lie about it. All right, so next we're going to do Dracula's hair. And again, I am trying to stand up each time I do this just so I can see where it lines up. All right, so there's one. And then I got to come up here. And this is probably going to be stamping off a little bit. There's that one. So I wasn't too perfect on that one, but it's going to be okay. Okay. Okay, and then he's got a little face that goes on him as well. So here's the little eyes, nose, and mouth. And again, I hope you guys don't shy away from two-step stamping because you kind of feel like, you know, it's, it's harder to get lined up, which sometimes it can be. But I promise you, if you just get some sets and work with them, you're going to get to where it's not that hard for you to do the two-step stamping. I, I, I don't like people to be afraid of um, any of the types of stamping because they all have their place and they're all really fun to play with. Um, and so I hope you guys will practice with your two-step stamps until you're comfortable. And I, and I promise the more you use them, the better you're going to get at it. Okay, so now what I want to do is, um, you know how I am about all of the little stamps. So let me bring in the front of this because we tend to overlook the little stamps 
So it has the bats, the stars, the, these three little um, tombstones, and a little ghost. Now, I, tonight I am using everything except the stars. So you're going to get to see everything in this stamp set tonight. Okay, so now I'm going to use my basic gray, and I'm going to ink up these tombstones. And again, I don't have any rhyme or reason for where I place things. I just start placing them down. And then as I end up going through and filling in with stuff, um, I just do what I think looks good. Okay, so look how cute those little, aren't those cute? Look at those little tombstones. Absolutely adorable. Let me clean that. Okay, so now we're going to come in. Let's see, what do I want to do next? Oh, I guess the only thing I'm doing is the um, ghost on this one. So the ghost I'm going to actually going to do in pumpkin pie. I like to kind of do them. Um, can you see I'm, how I'm kind of turning it to make him kind of do some different things? So that he doesn't look like the exact same everywhere. And I think I'm going to kind of bring one in here. And bring maybe just his tail in right there. Alrighty. So that's all there is to creating your own background with simple stamping. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the side to dry just a little bit. I'm going to bring in the inside piece because we're going to stamp on the inside. And I don't want you to freak out when I say dry a little bit. This stuff does it it they it dries like super fast. So I'm going to bring in the haunted house and we're going to put it down here. Guys, isn't this stamp suit set super cute? Super super cute. And let me I'm just going to kind of stick it over here on my on my chamois while I'm going so I don't take forever tonight. Because I definitely want you to see the last project. And then we're going to talk about my little offer. All right, so there's the little bats. Aren't they cute? Super cute. <laughs> I don't know. I get excited about every, any, any. I really like the little stamps for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I just do. All right, and then I think we're going to bring in those tombstones again. But we're not going to put them. Yeah, we will. So let's put them just like that. I think this is probably the most that I've ever decorated the inside of a card. I usually just put one little image and maybe a couple things around the edge. and then. Um, but I was just having so much fun with this set that I went a little cray-cray. All right. I know, Shanine, right? A fun Halloween card. Wait till you see all the cards tonight. They are so super cute. Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side. And now I'm going to bring in this little piece of pumpkin pie. And we are going to... They've got this little sentiment in here that says, Eek! <laughs> and we're going to use it. So I'm going to take this... But I will tell you this eek, for some reason, I kept wanting to stamp it upside down. I think it's because it's it says E-E-K, and for some reason, I wanted that K to be first. And so, for me, I have to be really careful with this one. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to bring in some bats, just to kind of make this fun. And then I think I'm going to bring in the eek again. And do that again. Let's bring that in. And we'll do an eek over here. And an eek over here. Okay, so super cute. Now I will tell you that um, I did pull some of the sentiments from the um, Bag of Bones set that I showed you guys last week. And if you missed that, if you missed that video, you'll definitely want to go back and watch that because that was a really fun video as well. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am just going to, remember this is our simple stamping, so it's cardstock, ink, and the stamp. And so I'm just going to take this and I am going to back it with some basic gray. We're just going to lay that down. I'm going to kind of turn it over and make sure I don't have any pieces overhanging. Then I'm going to take this piece and put it on here. Now, a lot of people will ask me, why don't you go ahead and put it on the card front? The reason is, is because I'm working with cardstock, sometimes I tend to cut my cardstock a little bit longer than what I need. And so I don't want to put um, this piece on the card front yet because I want to get this piece on so that if I need to trim it, I can trim it before I put it on the card base. All right. So this is just going to come in here. Alrighty, and then now, um, and again, you're, I'm going to flip it over. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is a little bit longer on that edge. I can see that edge, and I don't want to see that edge. And I know you're going to say, well, when you glue it down, you're not going to see it, Julie. Well, that is correct, except that it might not, I mean, some someone that is a little bit more perfect than me, not me, would look at it and say, oh, it's overhanging just a bit. So I'm trying to, for those of you that notice that type of stuff, not me, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to help you out here. So we're just going to burnish. Remember, when you use your bone folders, you burnish them, and that helps your cards to stay shut. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my adhesive. Guys, this, this set has been so much fun to play with. I, I really, really, really like it. All right, so now I'm just going to, and I, I mean, I haven't told you guys this in a long time, but I'm going to show you again. So when I lay my piece down to get it straight, I, I, I get this bottom piece first, and I get the left and the right edges, and then I just kind of lay it down, and that's you, that's how I get my uh, pieces to go on straight. Oh, do I mean OCD? Okay, yeah, if you want to say that. <laughs> People who are OCD. You know, but I don't want to say OCD because sometimes um, I get that way about things and I, I'm not OCD, but there's just certain things that we sometimes are like, hmm, I want it to be perfect. Okay, so this is a really fun sentiment in here and we're going to take this Hopefully I got that straight. Woohoo! I get so excited when I get it straight when I'm doing it on on live with you guys because you guys know I don't always do everything straight. Alrighty, and then this will just go on the inside and card one is done. So what do you guys think of this simple stamping card? Wasn't that fun? And what a cute card, right? Look at that. It says Eek, we've got Frankenstein and Dracula, and on the inside, trick or treat with our little haunted house. <gasps> I hope you guys like it. Okay, card one done. So now card two is gonna be our casual card. And as you guys know, with casual cards, um, we bring in like designer series paper, um, and we do a lot of um, different things. Now, this card, I went ahead. I think I don't need, I don't think I need the ink anymore because with the next two cards, I think I did all the stamping ahead of time because I figured since I was going to show you um, how to do the two-step stamping on that first one, you wouldn't need to see it every single time. All right. So for this one, though, I did um, stamp little Frankie here and now what I need to do is I need to bring in the die for him because there is a die that cuts Frankenstein out so I guess I should have told you that so there's a die that cuts out the house um, Frankenstein and Dracula I got to look at all of them because there's so many dang dies and then there's a bunch of standalone dies okay there's also a die that makes a bag in this one and we're gonna make the bag tonight so hang with me all right so let me bring my 
Let me bring the baby in. Our baby stamp and cut stamp stamp and cut machine. And let me find the die for his head. And so we're just going to set that on there and get it as straight as I can get it without sticking my head in the camera. And then we're just going to run this through. Whoops, got that kind of sideways when I went to go in. So that's going to cut his little head out. So see, you can stamp on it like I did on the first one. And guys, you can, and like I said, if all you want to do, you don't, let's say you don't have a um, die cut machine, and but you're really liking the whole set, you guys saw me just stamp with that, with that stamp set, and I didn't need the, any, any dies to make that first one super cute. Okay, but this one you will need. <laughs> just because this is our casual card. So what that means is now instead of just using ink and stamps and cardstock, we're actually gonna bring in um, some of the designer series paper that is from the, um, it's from this suite right here. Them Bone Suite, okay? <laughs> I make you laugh because I call him Little Frankie. Well, you know. <laughs> Okay, so it, all of the paper that you're seeing and some of the sentiments and the embellishments that I'm putting on this one um, are all from the Them Bone Suite. Now, the, the bundle is this one right here, Tricks and Treats Bundle. If you're falling in love with this, write that number down because that's the item number that you're going to need to place an order if that's what you want to do. All right, so let's get this one put together. I always have such a hard time choosing, I, I call it choosing sides. Which side of the designer series paper am I gonna use? Do any of you else struggle with that? It's like you look at the paper and you start to make your card and then you turn it over and you're like, oh, that other side's super cute too. I have such a hard time pushing that other side down. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I have pre-cut, I used our um, deckled circles um, it's the deckled circles dies. The, they, it comes with 14 dies. I've been using this a ton and I'm telling you guys, if, if you want a die set that has like almost every size possible, that's the one for you. Okay. So I did, I do need to stamp on this. So I'm going to bring in that trick or treat again, but you'll notice because I know what I'm fixing to do and I know that I'm gonna be like layering these circles, I'm not gonna center this when I stamp it. I'm gonna stamp it towards the bottom. So remember how I'm always telling you guys I do dry runs? And so when I'm talking about a dry run, it's like when I start putting pieces on here and I start looking at like how I want it all together, that, will, that always helps you and it, it helps me and it will help you know where to stamp your sentiments based on how you're gonna lay everything out. <laughs> Susie, you absolutely have troubles picking sides. I know, I know. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when you have, like for me, when I have two grandkids that are on opposing teams, which one do I cheer for, right? <laughs> for those of you that have never been in that situation, it's a problem. <laughs> just want to let you know. Okay, so you can see I'm just using liquid glue here to put these pieces in place. And then I'm going to bring in this one, which is the other side of this. So see, I didn't kind of, I on this one I didn't really have to choose cuz I am using both sides of the paper. All right, so that's gonna lay there. Then we're gonna bring um, little Frankie. <laughs> I don't know, it was funny because um, I talk to myself, I don't know about you guys, but I talk to myself when I'm making cards, when I'm sitting here all by myself. I think sometimes my husband thinks I'm crazy because he can hear me talking and he'll walk down here and look around like, who, who are you talking to? And it's just myself. But yeah, so as I was designing this card, I was calling him Little Frankie, so that's where his name came up. It was a conversation between me and my stamp set. <laughs> so
So how many of you can um, put a hands up and say, yes, I do talk to my stamp sets. I talk to my die cut machine. I know we're a little crazy in this world. So we're going to stick little Frankie right there. And then what I want to do is I want to bring in some of these um, bats that are the glow in the dark. And I know you guys can't see. Let me see if I, I don't know if I turn. Sometimes I can actually see the glow better when the lights are on. But I'm going to put it on here. And the, can you guys kind of see it glowing right there? Can you see that? Aren't those fun? They glow in the dark. And these are back in stock. They're back in stock, or at least they were this morning. I cannot guarantee that they will stay in stock because they're pretty popular. And you can see why, because they're stinking cute. So we're just going to take about five of these little bats, and we're just going to have them flying around Frankenstein here. Oops. So now let me see if I can, if I take this light down a little bit, can you kind of see the glow, how they glow in the dark? Oh, there, you can see that one. Oh, aren't they fun? Oh, I'm just, I'm telling you. Okay, so this one I went ahead and let me turn my lights back on. Sorry guys, lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off. Okay, so I went ahead and I, this Happy Halloween came from the Them Bone Suite. Um, but the bats and obviously Frankenstein came from this set. So, um, you can see that obviously these two, uh, this, the, the, the them bone suite, because I'm using all of the paper from that. And then I'm using some of the embellishments and the, so the, the, these two stamp, the, the, this set, the tricks and treats bundle and the them bones suite coordinate very well with each other. Okay, guys, car two done. Woo woo. What do you think? Isn't it cute with those deckled circles? And can you imagine when the kids get this card? Or like even for me, I can I can do a happy birthday on the inside and send this to my daughter-in-law because she was born on Halloween. All right, card two done. Okay, so card three isn't a card. Oh, we're gonna make a bag and I'm so excited about this bag. I showed it at my class today so some of you got to see it in the finished, um, uh, all finished, but I wanna show you how easy it is to make these bags. So I'm taking two pieces that are the same size, same designer series paper, and guess what? I can cut these at the same time. What do you say? <laughs> that is correct. But I do need my big die cut machine, so we're bringing in the big one. All right, and I haven't said this in a long time because I always assume you guys know, but um, our die cut machine, it has instructions on this bottom base so you absolutely know which plates that you need to use. This top section is talking about die cuts, which is, which is I, I am doing. The second section talks about embossing folders that are regular, and then we have some 3D embossing folders, and then this is the um, setup that you want to use for that. So for this one, we need plate two, which is this one right here. And then look, how cool. When you lay this one down, the instructions are still there. <gasps> Genius, right? Okay, and then it says we need two plate threes. Just know when you're die cutting, you always need both clear plates. I got, I got to show you this, guys. Can you believe that the, la, these plates were brand new last month? But that's how many card classes I've had between... Um, I pulled these out in September, and this is what they look like now. <laughs> Craziness. Okay. Sorry. I'm digressing. All right, so I've got both of those papers there. And I'm going to bring in, this is the die cut for this. And I'm going to bring this in. This is going to be the bottom. This is the top. So if you have directional paper, you want to make sure that it is... If this is the top, everything is going to be on the top. Oh, I forgot I was going to clean this after my class today, but I ran out of time. 
but I am going to put like kind of set this in place so it doesn't move especially since I have two pieces of paper so do you guys want to see the magic how it cuts through two pieces of paper now I am going to tell you you probably want to run it through twice okay I don't think you have to but I just do for good measure so I go through and I come back. Now you guys are hearing some creaking and cracking. That is perfectly normal. So if you have just gotten a, a die cut machine and it's doing that and you thought you broke it, you didn't. And look at this. So whoops, let me pull that off. Oh, I'm glad I'm not using that piece of paper. <laughs> let me get this top piece off. And look at that, it cut both pieces at the same time yay and I'm sure that Susie Howard will find a use for this <laughs> um, they are kind of cute as I looked at it I thought oh I might be able to find something out okay so now I've got a couple more steps to do with these two pieces of paper so before I um, start putting this bag together I want to bring in and I want to show you these other dies that are on here so these are dies that punch holes so that you can put ribbon in. And I want the bigger, there's a smaller one and a bigger one. And then this die is the one that gives your bag uh, uh, the, not, the, the real fun ragged edge. So again, we're gonna cut all this at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up this die. I think I want it a little bit higher. And then what I'm going to do, now this, this is the one you have to be a little bit careful with. You guys probably can't see it, but there is a score line right here and right here that when we ran it through the, uh, that first die, it put those score lines in it. And so I want to make sure that when I'm figuring out where to put the holes, that I'm not considering the whole piece as my center. I'm looking at from here to here because that's going to be the center of my bag. And so I'm going to go right up here, and I'm going to put it right up against the bottom of that jagged edge. And then we're going to run this through. And again, that's I'm running two pieces of paper through. Now this time I'm just doing it once. I'll let you know in a second whether that was a mistake. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so now let me show you what we have. So this comes off. Now I will say this, that um, this little piece that's coming off the top of this, believe it or not, Susie, I know you're gonna faint. I actually saved this piece because it has that jagged edge so I can use this on another card. Are you so proud, Susie? And same thing. So I've got two of these pieces that can go on another card. I'm not always good at saving stuff, but that I did. So see what it did? It cut the holes and then the top of the bag. <laughs> Are we excited? I'm excited. Okay. It's a good thing I talk to myself because, you know, even though you guys are typing in comments and stuff, I don't know if you're excited or not. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take all of these scored edges. Look at that side of the paper. Isn't that adorable? And you're just going to fold and burnish all your edges. Anytime that you're making a 3D project, a box, a bag, you always, the, it, one of the most important things you guys can do is burnishing those edges and making sure that they're gonna stay uh, down and in place. Now, one thing that I, um, uh, a, a demonstrator friend of mine said is she actually, I've never done it, but she'll actually bend it the other way as well to make sure that it, that it really folds and moves the way that she wants to. So if by burnishing just one edge, you still feel like it's not laying the way it should, or going together the way it should, then try her little trick and um, burnish it this way and then turn it this way and burnish it again. All right, and then I just need to burnish this edge here. 
maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, now you can either use liquid glue or you can use tear and tape. This all just depends on how well you feel you can line this up um, because you're going to have to, if you guys know with tear and tape, once you got it down, you have it down. The only thing with liquid glue is that you need to let it set a while um, to dry before you start messing with it. So because I'm doing a video, um, you guys need to like um, send me good vibes because we are using tear and tape. And again, you always want to burnish your tear and tape. And then I take my take your pick tool and I use that pointy edge and I just pull the top of that off. And so you're going to take your, your, your like hat, your, this, the small piece gets attached to the other's large piece. Okay. So now I'm going to try to get these lined up and what I, what I'm trying to line up is these score lines down here at the bottom and then I'm trying to get that all the way over on that score line as well whoops and so that one looks good that's the easy one because I was able to lay it down flat right the next one's not quite as easy because uh, you can't really Oh, you might, but let's see. Maybe I can lay it down flat. I didn't try that last time, but we'll try it this time. So take your pick tool to pull that top part off. This is what I'm using right now is called tear and tape. Yeah, I agree, Susie. I like tear and tape for any of these types of projects. But again, if you're nervous about getting it properly put together, Go ahead and use your liquid glue because um, as you can see, this it gets a little bit harder when you can't lay it down. I know, isn't that jagged edge just adorable? It's so cute. Okay, now before I fold the bottom, I'm going to kind of lay this down and I'm going to kind of see which side I want to be my front side. And so this section right here is going to be my front side. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start decorating this before I fold the bottom. So let's bring in all of our little pieces. And so um, this time I cut out some ghosts. Um, and I'm going to show you um, a really fun... I'm actually going to die cut one set of these just so you can see how this goes together because this is going to make a candy corn, um, which is super, super cute. So the pieces that I need is I need this, I need a piece of white and I need my ghost here. And then I also, I need this piece, but not, not in white. Um, I need this little piece here in white. I don't know if I can fit it all on here. We'll see. And then um, this is the bottom of the candy corn, and I'm going to do this in Daffodil Delight. And then um, the candy corn, the biggest piece, is going to be in Pumpkin Pie. And I'm just going to make that one sit still. Now, the problem I will tell you with these, um, the mini Stampin' Cut is it really doesn't like everything being level. It also doesn't like the closer you get to this top edge, the harder it is going to be for you to get this through. So I like to make sure that when I'm running things through this, that I'm not right up against the top up there because it likes it to be a little jagged. See how I've got like Whoops. Well, that's okay. It went there. So I have this one. Um, this one is like right here. Then the, the, the first plate is a little bit farther. And then this one is a little bit back. For some reason with my machine, it grabs it better when I do that. Now I am. Whoa. I'm glad I saw that. I'm glad I looked down. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I will tell you this, that everybody's uh, little machine is a little bit different and everybody will need to cut their machine 
um, and layer your plates based on the way it works the best. All right, done. Let me get this out of the way. I'm just gonna bring this in um, and look how cute the little ghost is. Uh-oh, I think I may have double cut him here. I did, oh no, my poor ghost. I'm gonna have to cut another ghost. But before I do that, let's get all these other pieces off. I was afraid of that because I started running it through and then I saw that this piece was off kilter. And so it cut everything but my little ghost and that was my fault because I started and um, did it again. And so, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> He's got two sets of eyes. I'm actually gonna use him for something later but not in this one. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Okay, let me see if he'll fit. Do I have enough room? I think I do because I don't need like his bottom on all of it. So I think I'm gonna be okay if we just lose that little edge. So this time, let me put that down in place. And let's get that put in there so that it goes through and run that through. All righty. <laughs> See, even those of us that do this all the time, um, when, we're, when we're talking and trying to die cut at the same time, sometimes that doesn't go together. But being that I talk to myself all the time, I should be good at that, right? All right, so let's just, and for those of you that don't know, Sometimes you'll look at these dies and you're like, when you poke them out, you'll just see that these holes aren't there. Well, these little holes are so you can put a tool in there to release it from the die. That's what those little, little holes are for. All right. Now I need my silicone mat because we're going to be gluing together because I, I just wanted to show you how this little um, candy corn goes together. Again, it goes together super fast. Oops, I didn't put my lid on that. <gasps> Shame on me. I'm always on you guys about putting your lids on that. All right, so we're just gonna put this on here. And you wanna kinda push it up so that it does kinda come off this edge so that you don't see any of that orange around. Then we're gonna take our bottom piece here. And kind of the same thing, you're just gonna kinda of wanna jiggle it around. And again, for this, I do suggest that you use the liquid glue because it gives you that wiggle room so that you can push it and get it to where it needs to be. Guys, how stinking cute is that candy corn? It is so cute. Okay, so now let's kind of put our, um, ooh, I forgot to cut a piece, shoot. Hold on one second. I got a measure because I forgot how big that piece was. So I need a two and five eighths by three. Okay, you guys remember that, two and five eighths by three. <laughs> Let me grab a piece of black so I can cut that. Just when I think I have everything all together. Okay, what was the measurements? Who knows them? I know it was three. Just wanna see how many of you are still here and how many of you are paying attention. I think it was two and five eighths, right? I hope that's right since none of you are answering. All right, I'll be able to tell in just a hot second. Yep, that's the right size. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this piece onto the front of our bag. And as I'm making this bag, I want you guys to think, how many holidays could you use this bag for? You, this, you could do this for graduation you could put a you know put some money in here 
Um, you could do this for Christmas. You could do this for um, a baby shower. You could put a little gift card in this bag and decorate it with all baby stuff on it. You could do it for Valentine's Day. Um, guys, this bag is going to be pretty darn handy. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're, we are going to build um, a little scene with our ghost. So I'm going to just put some glue right here because this ghost, I want to make it look like it's taking a bite out of the candy corn. All right. Then we're going to put it here and we're going to just stick it right here. But I'm going to be careful because I want his eyes to be black. And so even though I'm putting it up in this corner, I'm making sure that the eyes have that black behind it. All right. All right. And then what we're going to do is we are going to. Yeah, I, I'm, I agree, Janet. I, um, I forget to see everything that the dyes do as well. I kind of get stuck on one thing um, and that's not always good. We have, you know, it's kind of the same thing with those small stamps in the stamp set. We, we have a tendency to overlook some stuff. And um, it's always good that when you guys get something and you purchase it, to really play with it and see what it does. Okay, so this guy is going to go in this corner. Let me lay that down like that. And then I want this guy to go in the center of those two. see kind of like so again what I'm trying to do is make sure his eyes <laughs> and mouth is over the black section oh he came loose there he's got a little bit of glue on the front so I am going to bring my glue eraser in and get that off of there okay all right so then what I want to do is I want to bring this one in and I'm going to, this one's not going to have a ghost. It's going to be kind of down here by himself, a lonely little candy corn. So we're going to put this one down here at that angle. Then I'm going to come in. Now I'm not using dimensionals because I've got so many layers here. It's already kind of pushing everything up. Now I probably could and I probably will actually put one little mini dimensional in this corner down here just because all of these other layers right here have kind of pushed that up and so this is this is one of the dies so basically what I did was I cut this die out with this right here and then I did the whole um, Versamark ink with the white embossing powder and heated that up so that I could put white on black that's kind of one of my favorite things to do with black. When I want writing on black, I like to use embossing powder. How many of you like to use embossing powder for that? All right. So that's going to fit on there like that. So now that I have this part together, I can go ahead and glue the bottom. And again, you can use tear and tape. I'm just gonna, because I have my liquid glue right here. But the one thing I will tell you, this is the front, this is the back. You wanna fold down the back first, just so that it looks better. And then you wanna fold down the front. Cause it just gives you a better look. Then what you're gonna do is take your bone folder and go in here, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm just going in and I'm just making sure that those two small flaps are gluing down. Now, another thing that you could do is like take one of these blocks and set it down in there as well. And that will also help that if you, like let's say you're making a bunch of these, I would just have you know my block sitting there. Um, and I think this is the D block and I think it's the one that fits the best in there. Um, but you can, and then you can just really push down. Um, just a little tip. Okay, so now we're going to put our 
Um, this is our new checkered ribbon. It doesn't come with these sweets. It's, it's different. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some glue dots now. And I am, whoops. I'm just going to pull that up with my um, take your pick tool. And I'm going to stick it right on the end of that ribbon. Then I'm going to stick this ribbon through. And don't leave yet. I've got three more cards I'm not making tonight, but I'm showing you tonight. Okay, and then now I want it, I, I want to kind of look at how I want this to bend. And so I need my glue dot on this side right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab my glue dot, stick it right there, have it go through the little hole and then I'm just folding it down on the inside I don't know if you guys can see that but I'm just folding it down and then pushing down the glue dots so I've got one strap done so then we're gonna turn it around and get this next strap done and then like I said think of all the things that you could do with this bag yes it's with a Halloween set but do you have to use it just for Halloween no I'm always trying to get you guys to think about everything that you can do with the sets that you guys buy. And the reason I do that is because, you know, you can get a lot more use out of your sets if you can, you know, not look at it, look at them as just a spring set, just a, um, uh, you know, even just a Halloween. Because I'm actually going to start thinking kind of really hard about designing, like these heads, they don't have to be Frankenstein. Right? I mean, granted, his head is a little bit unusual, but I'm sure I could figure out something else to make with this. I was trying to do that before this came on tonight, but I kept getting phone calls, so I got sidetracked. All right, so what do you guys think? There's your little bag. Super cute, huh? And you can fill this with candy. You can fill it with movie tickets. Any, I mean, just think of all the possibilities that these bags can have for you. I mean, I think it's worth the buying the bundle just to get this die set um, because not to mention like, um, so normally our paper pumpkins, just to let you guys know, um, normally, yeah, Susie, yeah, these would be really cute for table settings for special events. Um, let's, I mean, think about this for a wedding, guys. If you did this in wedding paper, wouldn't these be cute little wedding favors to sit at the at the uh, at the wedding? Oh my gosh, so much stuff. So yeah, it's just a little bag, super cute. Okay, so I'm I did design three more cards, but first I'm going to bring in the ones I showed you tonight. Now remember what I told you: if you purchase either the sweet, so you can get the if either one, if you purchase the them bone sweet through me. There's the number for that. Or if you purchase this Tricks and Treats bundle, I'm going to give you the PDFs for everything I've done tonight, plus the three cards I'm fixing to show you, plus I am designing six more cards. So that means you will have instructions to make 12 cards out of mainly the Tricks and Treat bundle. Now, yes, I'm pulling in a few things from the Them Bones but if you don't want to get that paper and that's just not your thing and you have some other Halloween paper, just get this bundle because then I'm going to give you 12 free PDFs on how to make some more cards. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of three of those cards that I've already designed. Okay, so again, you can use any designer series paper. Sorry, let me get these out of the way. So here's one where I emboss the house in the ghost. How cute is that? And there's the inside of that one. So you're going, Cindy, yay, you already ordered both. So you're going to get those 12 PDFs. How exciting. Okay, then I did one that's kind of really bright and colorful, which is way out of my comfort zone. But here's this. And I, I do want to show you guys this set. Um, th these adhesive back sparkle gems. They go together with both them bones and this. That's what I used right here. Um, it wasn't designed for this, but I mean, maybe it was because, you know, it is stamping up. 
So what do you think of this one? It says, eek, shriek, and be merry. So this is from the Them Bones. But again, I brought in those uh, deckled circles. And then the Happy Halloween is from Them Bones. But if you already have a, st a, set that, a stamp set that says Happy Halloween, then you don't need to worry about that. So there's that one. And then, oh, this is like my favorite. Look. Trick or treat. So we've got the ghost pulling a trick, and then we've got the candy corn as your treat, even though candy corn is not my favorite. But So there's that one, trick or treat, and happy Halloween, and then I put a candy corn in here. Okay, so there's the these three, plus the ones I made tonight, plus the bag, and I'm probably going to be designing some more bags. I'm missing one, aren't I? Oh, yes, this one. Oh, nope, I already have that one in there. One, oh, I keep saying I need more because I did a bag. So guys, I'm gonna, you're gonna get 12, 12 PDFs that help you make some cards from this set. I know, isn't it cute? I oh, so you like this candy corn one? I know, me too. So again, if you're part of my team, you can place your order for yourself, that's fine, but just make sure I know that you've placed an order for the, um, for that bundle and it's it really is this is all I'm asking you to purchase is the tricks and treats bundle um, purchase it through me you're gonna get the 12 free PDFs plus you're gonna have so much fun playing with this set and you're gonna get those dies where you can be making bags for the rest of your life <laughs> I mean for every holiday you're gonna have that die set that you can make these wonderful bags with so super super cute um, and I'm just going to put this up one more time. So to place an order through me, if you're not part of my team, um, you can place the order through juliebrown.stampinup.net and then you'll get those 12 P free PDFs um, for this set. Um, and you're going to love them. They're going to be super cute. I've got them. I don't have them all put together. They're all designed. I just don't have them all stuck together yet. And I don't have the PDFs drawn up right now, but they will be done probably by the end of the night. So anyway, guys, as usual, thank you so much for spending time with me. I always, um, I, I really do appreciate you guys like hanging out with me because I know there's other things that you can be doing. I hope I showed you how fun this set can be. It's another one of those sets that I kind of felt like people overlooked it. And I kind of did because I didn't order it in the pre-order. And then I was putting another order in and I needed to put something for my rewards. And I thought, oh, I'll just get that set. I'm so glad I did because I am in love with this set now. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, uh, if, you're, if, uh, if you're not part of my team um, and you do place an order, I will see it come through. When I see it come through, then I will send you the free PDFs. So everybody have a good night. I hope I inspired you to go out and start making some cards tonight um, and have some fun with Halloween this year. So um, I know it's still September, but it's close enough, right? It's close enough to talk about Halloween. So everybody have a good night. I appreciate all of you so, so, so much um, for the way that you support me. You support me in my business and you also support me as friends. And I so much and uh, greatly appreciate that. So everybody have a good night and I will be live next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.